the best and the worst on the box. It's the Custard TV Podcast. So one of my favourite ITV crime dramas, Scott and Bailey, is back for a brand new series. The three episodes centres on one story and sees Rachel Bailey return to Manchester to work with her old colleagues after leaving to go to London. I got a chance to speak to writer Lee Warburton, whose background was in acting, and then he storylined and wrote a lot of the episodes in Series 4, and is back in complete control of the scripts for Series 5. We spoke about recreating Sally Wainwright's original characters, and his work with legends of the business like Russell T Davis and Paul Abbott. Enjoy. How difficult was it for somebody like yourself to come on board and take those characters? Sally Wainwright has such a rhythm to her dialogue and such humour in there. It must have been quite difficult to make sure that the audience didn't feel like, hang on, these these people are speaking differently than they did before. Well, as we all know, um, she's amazing. And one of her greatest talents is her the way she captures rhythms and words and so I, I don't know whether I actually have done or not. You know, you do your best. I think, you know, last year I worked on the series, storylining it, and wrote a couple of episodes. And yeah. luckily, Amelia Bulmore was uh, showrunning that series. And so I was in the room with her at all times. And, you know, that was amazing. So I, I had Amelia's voice and her ear for the series and the characters by my side. So, um, so, so, so that meant, you know, she, she would pick you up. But uh, after that, for this series, I mean, you know, all I can trust is that, you know, I, I know the area, I know the people, I'm from where it's set, and you just trust that, that you, you've, you've found an ear, but, you know, you can only write what's in your head, you know, so as much as you're trying to uh, emulate um, the amazing things that Sally does, you, you, you can only just trust yourself, I think. Because there is a danger that you'll just end up sort of copycatting as well, and you're not original, I suppose. Yeah. You, if you try and look too much to what Sally would have done. Yeah, because also Sally is constantly developing. You know, all her series, uh, you can see, are written by the same writer, but they have a very different voice. And I think she's constantly moving forward and developing. And you don't know where she would have taken the characters. I can't imagine she would have kept them in the same place. So, no. you know, and characters develop and grow. And um... and as, as far as your background in acting as well, does that make it... Uh, do you think you're better at writing with an actor's perspective? In a way, do you, do you write thinking the actors will do this and they'll say it like this, or do you write it and let somebody else handle how it turns out on screen? Well, I I speak every single word out loud several times. You know, when I'm writing it, I, I write it, then I speak it out loud a couple of times. First of all, to make sure it's sayable. I know and there's the amount of times that as an actor that I would look at something and I could see how beautiful it looked on the page, but I, you know you couldn't get your mouth around it. You couldn't. You couldn't say it with all with intention, you know. If you were angry and you had to say this very complex line, it's very difficult to get your mouth around it. And, and so, uh, I, I, I do think that helps. But also, I think what also helps it, having been an actor, is when you approach characters. Going back to you know Sally's amazing characters, is that you you when you act a part, you can only act your version. You can only I only know what's going on in my head. I can only act my version of any yeah. character. And every other actor would act it in a different way. And so when I'm approaching these characters, rather than being intimidated by the fact what's gone before has been so amazing, I just have to think what part of the, that character is within me. And I think that's what the acting helps me do. You saying you speak it out makes a lot of sense because there's a lot of bits in Scott and Bailey that I've always liked and you've carried it on this year, which is things like when they're in the toilet and uh, she doesn't like uh, Leslie's new sort of confident person i yeah. forget the character's name actually but she says you'll like her you won't like her at first because i said you'll like her but you'll like her <laughs> yeah. and that is a piece of dialogue that is very naturalistic that i don't think you'd hear in a lot of ordinary crime drama really but it's the it's the banter between the two of them isn't it that you've got to balance out 
you, you're absolutely right. And you, I think when you're doing that, because those actors do that brilliantly, and like I said, I've seen the talking about the new character, Anna, is what you have to do is, is it, with, with dialogue like that, is you just have to go for it in your head. You know, you just, you're just riffing, you know, and, and suddenly you catch up on a rhythm and you go, oh, no, that sounds nice. And you say it a few more times, yeah. and then you commit it to paper. So, good. I'm glad, I'm glad that at least that's working a bit. Yeah, yeah, it's... Um, it's, it's a tricky one, isn't it? It's a tricky one. She's so good. She's so good. She's okay. You'll get to like her. Well, no, you'll hate her for a bit because I've said you'll like her, and then you'll get to like her. I always smile a bit because the, the Scott and Bailey, anyone who's ever paid proper attention, the best scenes are often in the toilet. Yeah. And I love that. You, I love that you've <laughs> taken them back to the toilet again. There's a, there's a great emphasis on washing hands and toilet paper. It's the cleanest show on television, I think. Absolutely, and there's nothing wrong with that, Luke. Come on, when you've got supporters, you know, a clean place is a happy place. You know, you know, they're always washing their hands. They're always using hand lotion. I appreciate yeah. that. I, I think it's great because it's the only place where they wouldn't seem completely, uh, you know wrong to be to be discussing the private life with all, all these bodies piling up around them for them to be discussing the private life might seem a little bit lax so when they go to the toilet at least they can speak out loud you know do you know what i hate about up here serial killers no if you're not wearing a 200 quid shit blue suit then you're not dressed right mm. no not yours yours is nice mm, and it only cost 180 though i was looking at a lovely beige one for the wedding i don't fancy a wedding dress you can't dance at the disco me and chris are thinking of getting matching bride and groom suits are you still with him no we broke up in june yeah i thought so you text me oh you got it did you you never text back oh, didn't i mm. shit sorry are you all right yeah now we had a lovely time it was nice and then we'd done that and i got fed up and nice nice isn't knicker ripping is it <laughs> no it's not <laughs> the previous series to me felt very final i mean yes. i wanted as a fan i wanted more but i would have been quite happy to leave it there if that's where it was going so, when did the idea of a fifth series come about, and how did you get involved in that? So, yeah, I agree. And actually, when we were storylining the last series and working on that, uh, Amelia leaving felt like a full stop as well. It felt, you know, Jill going and them sort of finding peace felt like a full, uh, a bit of a full stop. Uh, but, you know, the fans wanted more, and uh, the, the, the characters felt like they had a lot more weight. Um, mm -hmm. And... Uh, you know, places to go, not wait, places to go. It felt like they, uh, we, we put them in a position where they both seemed, you're right, they both seemed all right, but it seemed a little bit too easy that they were both just nice and settled. So I think it was just about, you know, finding a bit more story in, 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 in their forward journey, what we could do next. And I think ITV wanted it, uh, Red were happy to do it, and, uh, Saran and Leslie were really wanted to, to make more of it. So, yeah, uh, I think, we got together last February to talk about it and we t talked about what that might be as a real finale, you know, as the end end, mm. you know, not really much coming back from the end end, the end of a love affair maybe is how we, we wanted to work on it. Do you think if you weren't um, a fan of Scott and Bailey and you wanted to, you know, see what all the fuss was about, this series would be a good point or do you think it would be better to go back and, I don't know, watch it on ITV Encore every week, every night <laughs> at well, 10 o'clock. As a very unbiased member of the writing community, <laughs> no vested interest in Red Brook on no. TV. Uh, no, you can just speak it like it is. Start watching it from the very beginning. Okay. Uh, watch all of them several times by the box sets. And maybe I have if these t-shirts available, you should do those. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll sort them out. I think it's a self-contained series. I think mm. you could land in this and watch it. Um, and not have, not n need to know the backstory or their histories in order to, you know, get a full story. Because unusually, this is a very different type of series in that it's one story across three episodes. Um, it's a very different feel for Scott and Bailey. But, but, um, but, but equally, I, I, I think uh, it, it will. I be think more... you'll get more out of it, won't you, if you know the yeah the backstory. It's, it's there. a different version of the show. This one, it's so different. And, you know, it's it's got a very different feel. You can only arrive at this point, I think, understanding why they're where they are, by understanding the, the what went before, because what went before was amazing. They don't exactly come back together and it's all 
you know, off we go, a team. Saran's character is is very distant when she returns from London. Um, and I always like it when they're best pals and they're chatting together, so there's a real distance between them. And how difficult is that when you want to start, you know, building that dialogue, but you've got Rachel being really on the defence and there's a lot of things going on in their life. The last series, things have happened between this series and the last series that you can't ignore. Yeah, it, it is so difficult, Luke. It's really difficult. Because like what we were saying before, what you want to do is you want to do what old Scott and Bailey were. That's what you love. You love it when they're in that position. But you can't just keep repeating. You can't just keep repeating no. what you did. There is no point. When you were saying, you know, uh, it could have ended last series, why come back? Well, the only reason to come back is if we want to explore different tensions in the life. And I think, in in my head, really... Yeah, I, I want to bring them back together. I want that friendship. I want to see all that. Um, but maybe there's something for an audience to understand of that difficulty when two friends are slightly out of step. And it's not that they're mm-hmm. arguing in this series. It's not that they're at each other's throats. Um, they're just a bit distant, really, aren't they? They've, they've they, missed out on bits of each other's lives that they yeah, can't... I think that's very true that you, you have so much expectation when you've been away from very close friends. And sometimes you get back together and anything one of you says, the other one doesn't know what the intention of that is. Hopefully by the end of the series, we get to that friendship and that understanding. Mm. If you leave somewhere, you imagine that place goes on pause and you yeah. come back and you can just press play. But actually, Leslie's characters had a lot going on in her life and Saran's characters had a lot going And so they meet in the middle and they're not quite the same people they were when they left. No, and, and so it, it's such a dangerous game to play. And, uh, you know, as a writer with that and, and for the show, because we know what the audience love. But hopefully our audience will recognise the sadness or the discomfort of that with their own friends. But it wouldn't be like that unless they actually cared about each other. It wouldn't be that that sense of out of step unless unless we knew that they loved each other. I love Dodson. I used to love Jill's banter with Dodson. You know, I, I couldn't wait to get my hands on that. And I, I wrote some sort of Janet Rachel banter with Dodson, you know, that sort of foul-mouthed, yeah. funny, funny stuff. And we talked about it and we said, well, it, that, that's not who she'd be with them. That's, no. she's been with Jill for a very long time. Jill was a, a good she friend. She doesn't have that same rapport, would she? she? They're a lot younger and they yeah. don't have the history. And there's a rank difference and she's in a different position and they didn't grow up together, you know, in the force. They haven't been mates together in the force. So as much as you, I want to go, no, I want to write those Dodson moments, you can't, yeah. because it's changed, and you have to acknowledge change constantly within the series. So that's that's the, the difficult thing for me, because it's not my series. And if Sally had moved those characters forward, you know, she'd be completely confident about how those changes would happen. But for me, I'm, I'm a little bit like, I'm making those changes, and, I'm, uh, uh, you know, and it's not mine. I do wonder whether she was a bit miffed at Amelia Bullmore leaving Scott and Bailey, because she didn't half kill her quite brutally in uh, Happy <laughs> Valley quite quickly think, as well. I think it was some sort of sneaky transfer deal she did. <laughs> <laughs> I think she's been going around playing fantasy football leagues with, with her cast. It would have been so easy just to replace Jill with a similar person, wouldn't it, for them to yeah. rub up against. Yeah, and I just couldn't do that. That, that for me, was completely wrong. It would have been an echo or a shadow, because that either would have tried to do something completely different and had, you know, the loveliest, warm, warmest bloke come in. Yeah. Or I would have created, you know, the new big bad, and, or, you know, and, I, and then I would have looked like I was aping something. So I, I think what I wanted to do was do that thing that, I mean, Joss Whedon always talks about it in Buffy, is that you always put the characters... And the audience in the same position. If my audience are going to miss Amelia and Jill in the show, then I want my characters to miss Amelia and, and you know and Jill. I want the audience and the, char- and the characters to be in the same position. So some, in some soaps, they always say once you've got rid of someone, you never mention them ever again. You know, but well, that's not the way life works, is it? Either really. No, and you you miss so much story. And so I think you know she doesn't really get a, she gets occasional mentions in the first step, and then in the second step. You know, something happens which causes them to reflect upon, you know, where they all are, something quite big. And um, and that takes place in Jill's office. And, and I think it's there that you, you feel the ghost of of Jill's character and, and what they're missing. You quite rightly got a lot of praise for the final two episodes of the last series, which were one story. Yeah. And that's why I was so excited at the idea of 
three episodes of one story. Is that daunting or is that exciting? 